story that's been a little bit lost uh, later half of the week. Votes are still being counted tonight in a couple of those Tuesday elections. Trump endorsed candidate Chris Kobach lost half of his already narrow lead today in that Kansas GOP gubernatorial primary. Washington Post reports that according to a vote tallying error, Kobach's lead over the incumbent governor Jeff Collier is now just 91 votes. Collier is refusing to concede the race. Kobach has acknowledged the results could change, but says he intends to start campaigning immediately for November as if he won. Reminder, he happens to be Secretary of State of the state of Kansas. That means his office would oversee any possible recount. And tonight on television, Kobach said he'd be happy to recuse himself in that event, though he reminded all of us recounts are county by county affairs. You may recall he led President Trump's now disbanded Commission on Election Fraud. We are also still following that special election, the Ohio 12th Congressional District. That race remains too close to call. If you were with us that night watching Steve Kornacki's coverage, you understand how that could be. The Republican Troy Balderson is leading by less than one percentage point. And after Republican New York Congressman Chris Collins was arrested on insider trading charges yesterday, now New York's 27th congressional district could be up for grabs. Big area of real estate upstate. Collins, who pleaded not guilty, says he'll be staying in that seat and he'll, his name will be on the ballot come November. So it's a lot to talk about. And with us to do that, Michael Steele, former chairman of the Republican National Committee. That's why he's smiling. I said former. <laughs> and Shannon Pettypiece, White House correspondent for Bloomberg. Michael, I'm coming right at you. If yes. you had your old job. Uh -huh. Other than looking for a new job, if you had your old job <laughs> as party chairman, how worried would you be tonight? You see this? <laughs> <laughs> you had a full head of hair. Yeah, yeah, exactly. It would be like that, you know. Um, I would be very concerned at this stage. I mean, we are coming out of the summer uh, you know, doldrums, if you will, where folks don't pay attention to politics and it's, it's a little bit of a wasteland, even though you've got primaries and all that going on. The fact of the matter is, from a party perspective, in terms of setting up the November campaign, you want the kind of momentum that is going to energize your base, get those dollars flowing, and, and really put in place the messaging uh, that you want to bring it home, right? And so that connects all those pieces. It's, I call it the messenger, the message, and the money. And that combination is one that works to empower the base to go out and deliver that vote. Shannon? In this, in okay. this case, that, I was going to say, in this case, uh, the fact that you have a red district like this that is that close, uh, that the president won by 11 uh, points in 2016, is a real problem. It will impact the money. It will impact the message. And it certainly will impact the messengers around the country who have to make de that delivery. And forgive me, Michael. Shannon, to pick up right up on what Michael just said, you've got this barn burner of a race in Ohio that should be done and dusted, safe Republican district. Right uh, into that, we go into the arrest of uh, Collins, 27th District of New York. It can't look good. Uh, 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 tell us about the folks you've been talking to. Well, I mean, within the White House and within President Trump's outer circle, they are certainly aware that this does not look good. Uh, it is no shock to anyone that the Ohio 12th District, as Michael was explaining, if that is up for play, well, there's about 70 other House yeah. seats that are mm -hmm. up for play, too. Uh, and the Democrats only need 23. And it is certainly not lost on the president or anyone in his inner circle of what a Democratic-controlled House means to them. It means uh, investigations and everything from Russia to the emoluments clause. Uh, it means the risk of impeachment, which his lawyer uh, Rudy Giuliani raised today with me, the fact that if there is something referred uh, to Mueller and there's a Democratic House, that probably means impeachment. Uh, so the president is very aware of this. But what they're going to do, I think, is still a question, because there is still a debate about whether or not the president is uh, the greatest tool in the Republicans' toolbox or, uh, you know, their worst enemy. Uh, Michael, as bumper stickers go, if you had to design the GOP bumper sticker to be used universally around the country in all 435 <laughs> districts for the midterms, what would your terse message be to the voters? 
Who, me? Uh, oh, man, you're on fire tonight. <laughs> that would be it, because that sums up the state of the party right now, a party that has uh, not really defined um, it, it, its relationship with the American people. It, it is clearly defined and continues to define its relationship with the president. Uh, and that is the problem. Uh, this has got to be about how the American people view. Now, look, you don't have to go back that far in history, uh, Brian, to understand what this election looks like. It looks like 2006 in, in many respects. It's got elements of, of 2008 to it. It's got all of these, these pieces from the past where the, where the party has dropped the ball, where it has not clearly defined itself with the American people or has defined itself in a way that the American people summarily reject. Uh, I said in 2006, running for the United States Senate, that it was like running with a scarlet letter R on your chest. And, and it was. And we took a big drubbing. Uh, that scarlet letter R is back on our chest. And like the American flag at a time of crisis, it's upside down. Yeah, what you said back then might have been 12 years before its time. Uh, yeah. but, so, Shannon, from the Jersey Shore to Northern California, you're going to have all these Republicans on all these ballots, are they all kind of ad-libbing their association with the guy at the top of the ticket for Republicans with uh, uh, being a part of the Trump era GOP? Well, I mean, they're really in a difficult situation because they need that Trump base mm -hmm. as a Republican. You need that Trump base to turn out. But but that's not going to be enough to get you to beat the Democrat on the ticket. You also need to get moderates and independents as well. So, I mean, that's what everybody across yep. the country is struggling with. Um, and I mean, to this point, Michael was just making about 2006. It is that's I hear a number of people referencing that. And with this indictment of Chris Collins, it again looks more like 2006, because if you remember then, there was this wave of scandal seats that opened yep. up uh, that people were able to move into. And there's a sense that there's going to be more of these scandals bubbling. And now this party is not just associated with Trump, but the people's questions or this taint in their mind about uh, corruptions or concerns about, uh, you know, really what's going on in the Republican Party. Hey there, I'm Chris Hayes from MSNBC. Thanks for watching MSNBC on YouTube. If you want to keep up to date with the videos we're putting out, you can click subscribe just below me or click over on this list to see lots of other great videos.